And the judges will be Joe Cortez, Richard Murray, and Frank Burnett, all from the state of New Jersey. You know, Tim, I think that the fact that Davis came in at 137 could be significant. He usually, or he used to like to fight at like 132, 133. He was a vegetarian, and I just don't think he was strong enough. Like, these four pounds could mean a difference to him, but let's find out. Well, they agreed to uh, make the fight over the 135-pound lightweight limit. But, of course, uh, Howard Davis uh, still considers himself a lightweight, and that's the title he wants before he would think at all about it moving up perhaps to the 140-pound division. This is a very good fight for both fighters, mainly because, see, they're both a masterful in their uh, skills. They take their time, they're technicians in the ring, and what we have now basically is just a build-out process. The both fighters are still cold because there is no perspiration. In other words, they really didn't warm up that much in the back. After the loss by Coverson to Camacho, the only blot on his record, he scored a third-round knockout in May of this year over tough Jeff Passero, so he bounced back well from that one defeat, in which uh, his handler said that he was not 100% physically for the Camacho fight, and Gil Clancy said he also had trouble with the southpaw. And what a southpaw. Southpaw with speed. Macho Camacho, very much in the title picture of the junior lightweight, and soon will be in the lightweights as well. This is number two and number four in the world, ranked by the WBC today. Davis and Coverson. Both fighters have tremendous hand speed. And um, what I like about Coverson is the fact that he punches very fluently. I mean, every, when he throws this combination, they're, they're very, very clean. Davis, he can do everything. He can punch, he can box. He's very, he's versatile in the ring. Well, Davis is fighting with his left hand down by his side, inviting Coverson to throw right hands. One thing the fighter can afford to do is to rush himself. Good solid left jab scored by Davis there. That's certainly one of his best punches. Under a minute to go in round one, scheduled for ten. Don't forget tomorrow, Roberto Duran and Davey Moore, the great fight from Madison Square Garden Thursday night, will be seen tomorrow afternoon on CBS Sports Sunday. The punch for Howard Davis is that left jab of his. He must keep it uh, out there consistently to keep uh, Coverson at bay. Keep him off balance and drop that right hand on him. Under 30 seconds to go in round number one. Two fencers parrying and thrusting here in this opening round. Coverson going to the body underneath the elbows of Davis in the last exchange. Ball winding down round number one. Two well-matched lightweights. Two of the best in the world. Schedule 10 rounder on the left of your screen in blue. Howard Davis Jr. His only loss coming in a title try against the former champion Jim Watt. Greg Coverson in black. Trying to have people forget his only loss, which came to Hector Camacho also on national television here on CBS. Now Davis is moving around the ring with his left hand by his side. A lot of people might think that's a no-no because you can get hit with right hands. But I used to teach my fighters to jab sometimes from that position and sometimes from the up position. That way it really can confuse your opponent. I don't think it's a no-no. I think it's good strategy at some time. Well, the good thing about it is the fact you can't see it coming. And with the hand speed of Howard Davis, that's it's a very good uh, punch to throw with that left hand down like that. But very few fighters can do that. That's right. You have to have super talent. Also, when it does land, it lifts the other fella's head up, and you can hit him with a good right hand if you land it. Good combination scored by Davis. Acknowledged by Coverson with a little grin. Well, Coverson has been bothered by a neck problem, and I asked him about it yesterday, Tim, and he said he's, you know, it doesn't bother him anymore because he has been going to uh, therapy, I think, three times a week, and doesn't seem to be bothered at this moment. The pinch nerve that uh, plagued him throughout his career, and he had a wrist injury earlier in his career, the problem with uh, Coverson to be 100% physically fit for every professional bout, yet he has lost only the one time. In the way I see this fight so far is Davis is getting the best on the outside and Coverson is getting the best on the inside. He landed a couple of pretty good punches inside. You know, we saw that against Davey Armstrong and, and in his preparation for the Armstrong fight. But if he can get in there, he's very good inside. Um, just did it again. Anytime he gets inside, he's very effective. What you need to watch with uh, talent, both fighters, they use their shoulders a great deal. A lot of times the punches are thrown, but if you notice, the punches are being caught uh, on the shoulder. They took a lot of punches. This is a more aggressive Howard Davis than we have seen in previous fights. 
here in round number two. Standing more flat-footed. This is something he has talked about, especially after the Balazar fight, where he was knocked down twice by Tony Balazar. You watch the balance of both fighters. Every punch they throw, they're still in a position to throw another punch. You notice the way the stance are. Every time they step away, they have the balance. Just then, Coverson decides that to the uh, left side, the right side. Still in position to throw a punch. Good solid left hook by Davis. Coming to the 22nd mark remaining round two. Coverson is trying to throw a counter right hand on Davis, but it's difficult to do because of Davis, Davis' hand speed and movement. Coming to the end of round number two, a well-fought second round by both Howard Davis and Greg Coverson. Don't push, don't push. In the blue trunks, the 1976 Olympic champion against Greg Coverson, the candy man from Detroit, Michigan in black. We had a solid second round that we scored for Davis, but there was excellent boxing by both fighters in that round. Tim, both of these fighters are very, very difficult to hit with head punches. Now, Davis is inviting that right hand to the chin with that left hand down, but you just can't seem to hit him with it. And I, I used to work with some fighters, and they, they would box a guy that kept his left hand down, and I would tell him to throw the straight right hand right at that low left hand. And you'd be surprised how many times the fighter gets the hand out of the way and gets hit in the body. But at least you hit something. Well, as amateurs, you know, Davis and I work out a lot together, and it was difficult. I know I, I know I have very fast hands, but very difficult to really hit him in the head. I would go to his body, and he would go to my head. It must have been a sight seeing uh, the fast hands of Leonard Davis sparring with each other. Well, there was a beautiful combination by Davis, but Coverson's skill came through. He slipped the punches beautifully. I, I think if I was in each guy's corner, I'd say, just concentrate on the body. They were both outstanding avenues. Coverson, a Detroit Golden Gloves champ, a Michigan AAU champ. Of course, Howard Davis won everything. There was to win national AAU championships twice, four times New York Golden Glove champ. And the ultimate, the Olympic gold. Well, Davis is standing there flat-footed and throwing some bombs. And what Coverson needs to watch out for is Davis' left hook. Because he's standing there, he's standing straight up, right in front of Davis. He knows Davis throws the punch to the body, comes back to the head. So Coverson is susceptible for a left hook thrown by Davis. Also, Davis looks a lot stronger now. There's that left hook you were talking about, Ray, right on the button. Right hand scored by Coverson inside. Davis willing to stay there. Punch back. Well, we have to say this is the new Howard Davis, Tim. He's not moving around. He's standing flat-footed and punching. This is indeed the new Howard Davis. We have not seen him like this except on rare occasion, the occasional round with a fighter that he's been able to dominate, knowing that he can't be hurt, he's done it. But most of the time, he wants to dance, move, score, get out. And here, against Coverson, he's been willing to stay in the middle of the ring and mix it. Well, so also, yesterday, Tim, uh, I was talking about moving up in weight. And so I feel that would be good for him because he, would be, he, he appears to be a lot stronger now. After 30 seconds to go, and they go toe-to-toe -to -toe in the middle of the ring. Davis with a better of the exchange. All right, hold it. I got it. I got it, Howard. Step back. Again, Coverson is going almost quickly for the head. Just as I said that, he landed a body punch. Final seconds of round number three. Come on, Greg, get your head. New Jersey, we are live with lightweight action. Howard Davis, Jr., ranked number two by the WBC. Number four ranked, Greg Coverson in the black trunks. Tomorrow, Roberto Duran and Davey Moore, one of the most thrilling fights in years in boxing. You'll see it on CBS Sports Sunday. Good jabbing by Howard Davis. It still looks to me, Tim, that a lot of times when Jay Davis jabs, he has an open glove. He flicks that left jab. Not all the time, but about half his jab. Isn't it great when a fight oh. the the critics wrong? They thought that Davis would be running around the ring. Instead, he is the aggressor. Good solid left hand. It looks like he's enjoying this style, too. He's fighting with great confidence. He always looks confident. But here, he seems to be enjoying this toe-to-toe -to -toe action in the center of the ring. Also, once again, he's in a very tough position. I mean, every fight is a championship fight. He has to win in order to go for that title. Well, they told Coverson in the corner, anytime he gives you the body, go for the body. And he, he does throw a few, but then he goes back looking for that elusive head of Howard Davis. Davis has covered up well as Coverson has tried to fight inside on him. Right hand cut. 
Robertson leaning. Fortunately for him, there wasn't a whole lot on it. It's kind of a slap from outside. Good left scored by Davis. Tim, but some of them seem to be with an open glove. You see how elusive both fighters are. They're throwing eight, ten punch combinations. And maybe three or four of them are really landing clean. And you know, Davis is using his strength in this fight. Uh, Ray, he's able to pull Coverson around the ring a little bit. I mean, that is the new Howard Davis. He's never used his strength, always his skill. Well, speaking to uh, Coverson's trainer, he said that Coverson's really light for this particular weight. And they talked about him moving down in weight. He has no problem whatsoever in making the lightweight limit. Coverson trained by Del Williams, managed by Billy Goods. Davis has a little abrasion underneath his right eye. Boy, is he digging. He's standing flat-footed, digging Davis. Hard left hook to the body in that last exchange. Under a minute to go, round four. Hard, hold it, Howard. Get off the pad. Let him out. Coverson looks a little windy. The team seems to have set in with him because his punches now are beginning to just be thrown out there. There's no snap behind his punches now. You see here, just basically arm punches. Whereas the Davis punches are very, very sharp, very accurate. And he put his body behind him. Under 30 seconds to go in round number four. Down to the under the 20 second mark now. Davis with only eight knockouts in his 23 victories. Never known as a big puncher, but this is a new look power Davis in this fight. All of it has been right there in the center of the ring. Final seconds, round four. Five in round number five. Davis. In the blue trunks, Coverson in black. In Coverson's corner, uh, they say, how do you feel? He said he's a little tired. And it's evident that the fatigue has set in. And the punch to look for now from Howard Davis is the left hook. I think what's going to probably put Coverson down is the left hook and right hand. A left hook by Davis just land there. The Ray Leonard, Joe Clancy, and Tim Ryan are live from Atlantic City. Coverson, as we've seen this pattern before, as he's tried to punch to the body inside, Davis has just been standing there, covering up well with arms and elbows, gloves, and uh, has not been damaged. Well, Davis is the strongest guy inside. Him. He's able, he's able to move Coverson back, and he's able to muscle him a little bit. That was enough to thrown by Howard Davis. Once again, lands. I really think these extra three or four pounds has helped Howard Davis a great, great deal. Looks much better. What if he fights exactly at 135 in the title fight? Then and what difference, if any, are we talking about? Well, Tim, it depends. It depends on how they bring him down to the 35. If, if, if he's brought down properly to the 35, he can make 35 at the weigh-in and go in the ring probably at 138 or 39. It's just a question of drying out overnight. But, he, but I, I think they've changed his diet a little bit. Ray knows more about that than I do because he had been a vegetarian, and I think it's helped him. Well, I asked Davis yesterday whether or not he's still a vegetarian. He said now he's changed. He's eating meat now. It could make a difference. Hmm. Again, Solid left, left hook from Davis. And right hand back from Coverson. Tim, that's the punch you look for from Howard Davis. The left hook. The left hook right hand has been effective. That's what he's doing a job. Good combination. He's got Coverson in some difficulty. Davis sensing it, pounding away. Coverson staying on his feet. But Davis scoring at will here. That punch hurt Coverson. That left hook hurt Coverson. Once Davis again. desperately would love to send Coverson to the canvas and score a knockout victory. He's really hurt now. Coverson surviving here so far. Hasn't thrown a punch back in the last several seconds. Very close to being stopped right now, Tim. He's getting nailed. Davis with a right hand there. Coverson yet to throw a punch back. Larry has it looking him closely in the eyes. Under 30 seconds to go. Mr. Davis yeah. pounding away here in the fifth round. Mr. Right, Mr. Right hand is right, that hook and right hand is doing the damage. And Davis just took a blow himself, throwing all those punches. Had to get him a little tired. As it gave Coverson a good look that time. Final seconds of round number five with Coverson refusing to go down and now trying to rally back. Looking very wary. Another right hand and a left from Davis. From his quarter. Let's see if Coverson can rally back. Remember, these two fighters have only lost two fights between them. One apiece. One thing about uh, uh, Coverson is fact, now he fights himself out. You see here, he's talking. He talks to his, to his opponents. And this really motivates him. Doesn't have the punching power to bother Howard Davis up to this point, though, Ray. 
Coverson with 19 KOs and 31 victories. Davis with 8 and 23 wins. Either known as a one-punch knockout artist. Coverson rallying well here after taking much the worst of it in round five. Those, those body shots now thrown by Coverson. Now that's the right place to go to the man's body. Loosen him up. He's doing a good job. You know, that happens a lot in boxing. One fighter goes out and has a very, very good round, throws a lot of punches, has to take a breather the next round, and then it becomes the other guy's turn. You see, what, what Coverson uh, feels is the fact that, that that last round, Davis threw a lot of punches. Davis threw a great deal of punches, and he could be a little arm weary. And what Coverson's trying to do, take advantage, not give him a breather. He's been pounding to the body, especially with that right hand, that shot right there, just above the belt line. And see, that's good thinking, Tim, because all of a sudden, the man's trying to get his second win. He doesn't have a chance when a guy's going to his body. Sugar Ray Leonard, Bill Clancy, and Tim Ryan. And we have had an action-packed, lightweight fight. They're toe-to-toe -to -toe again in the center of the ring. Howard Davis and Greg Coverson. Now, what Davis has to be careful of is winging his punches now, because he is a little tired from throwing those punches, and he may get hit by an overhand right. Davis has never fought like this. This is toe-to-toe -to -toe action. And Davis is a little tired right now. Ed Coverson had a chance to drive that right hand to the body and didn't do it, so I guess he's tired also. Tim. They both looked weary. They were leaning on each other there with their mouths open, looking for a chance to get a little more wind. Under a minute to go in round six, the pace has been furious. All right, now, Coverson did great in the beginning of the round, driving body punches in there. That's what he should keep doing. So both men are trying to get that second win going. Well, through five, you have to have Howard Davis ahead. On our cards, we scored the first round even. The rest of it for Davis, so Coverson rallying back well here in the sixth round. has still got some to come back the way we see it. Now Davis is on his toes. And once he's on his toes, now he is very difficult this way because that left jab of his stays out at all. This with the right hand, under 30 seconds to go in round six. And Coverson is making a mistake trying to dance with him. He doesn't have the legs to dance with Davis. And what's happened, see, Davis is starting to throw the rhythm of Coverson off. See, Coverson can't set and throw his punches. Final seconds of round number six, scheduled for 10, Howard Davis and Greg Coverson. Ryan with Gil Clancy, Sugar Ray Leonard. You're watching Howard Davis Jr. and Greg Coverson live from Atlantic City, New Jersey. Coverson in black, Howard Davis in blue. It has been a furiously paced bout. We have Davis ahead, but a good round in number six for Greg Coverson after Davis clearly had him out in round number five, but couldn't get him to the canvas despite landing at will. Go, rally by Coverson. Coverson wants to fight inside, and Davis, the first start this round, he was back on his toes because he was very effective moving like he was. The boxing fans looking in, no doubt, have heard or read about the great Duran Moore fight. Coverson back hurt. stories. Coverson hurt by that right hand. We just want to remind you, Duran and Moore tomorrow on CBS Sports Sunday. Don't miss it. It is a thriller. Davis looks like he got his second win. Both guys are doing a great job of using those shoulders to uh, block off some of those punches. Such good technicians. Two of the best in the business, no question about that. What Coverson is going to have to do is going to have to try to get inside, get closer, and hurt Davis, and take advantage of him. Because he's having trouble while Davis is on the outside. Davis' hand speed and movement is very difficult to deal with. He doesn't give a man an opportunity to set. Well, we mentioned that Coverson is a, a good boxer, but Davis is a great boxer. It makes the difference. Coverson had to change his style. Now watch Davis get out of the corner. He has to stay inside Coverson. That's what he has to do. Once he gets there, he has to stay there. Can't fight him this way. Can't win the fight outside. Inside, Davis takes a chance to, to, to get a breather. He takes that opportunity. Under a minute to go in round seven. Scheduled 10 round lightweight bout. Look at the body, Greg. Stay out there. Don't want to win there. Coverson doesn't seem to have the strength to sustain an attack, Ray. He lands a good shot, and then he'll just hold. Well, Gil, once again, we talk about uh, Coverson moving down in weight. In fact, that may be good for him if uh, he can't maintain solid as a lightweight. 
One motivation if he gets to 130 pounds, and he's already talked about is another try against Camacho. Now he's been wobbled again by Davis. Howard, Davis lands a right, and another right. His eyes are glancing. He's ready to go now. Coverson in difficulty, and he just sagged down. Sagged down to the canvas. It didn't come from a blow. It was accumulation. And finally, Coverson dropped as Davis, as he did in round five, had him in a lot of trouble, and we're winding down here in round seven. This kind of sagged on a delay basis. We're live in round number eight, the first knockdown scored by Howard Davis in the seventh round. Great Coverson in black, Davis in blue. In Coverson's corner, they told him he has to stay right on top of Davis and fight. And he said, what do you think I'm trying to do, man? It's not that easy. But he also said, it's a good thing that uh, he brought it out. He said, this man is strong. He think he is. That's right. I, I noticed I noticed that myself, Ray. He seems much stronger physically than he has to me in any of his previous fights. You can't pull him around. Coverson, Gamely trying to rally back as he did in round six, a round that we scored for Coverson after Davis had him in trouble in round five. This looks so weak to me. Coverson looks really weak to me. I think Davis can just about do what he wants to do now. Okay? It will take a big punch by Coverson to put him back in the fight. You know, it's like a light heavyweight against a, a light heavyweight against a heavyweight, solid heavyweight. Coverson got a piece of Davis with a right hand and, and another one. Ray Coverson has lost only once in his pro career. Took a right hand on the break from Davis. And he's wobbling. And it hurt him. And he's tired of these games. Larry has a referee doing his usual efficient job. Scoring will be by three judges at ringside, all for New Jersey. Both there's, fighters missing. Well, there's the mistake by Coverson trying to land that right hand on the chin of, over Davis's jab. You can't hit Davis on the chin at that point. He's too quick. Has to be to the body. <laughs> hit him on the side of the head that time. You watch Howard Davis inside. Now what he's trying to set his man up for, once again, the left hook. The right hand, left hook. Because he, inside, Howard goes into like a little shell, and he comes out very fast with punches. You see he is giving give his shoulder to Coverson. Now watch him throw punches. Under a minute to go in round eight. Sugar Ray Leonard, Joe Clancy, and Tim Ryan. We are live from Atlantic City. Now Davis starting to give angles to Coverson. Side to side. Left with right hand once again. Good combination scored by Davis. And again, Coverson wobbles. He's, he's in bad shape now, Coverson. Very bad shape. Three consecutive left hands, and that's it. Larry Hazard steps in. I saw here on NBC, he stopped Pedro Laza here in Las Vegas in round nine. That was back in February. And Jose Edwards, as you see, a southpaw in the white going up against Tricone in the red.